Oh, hello, hello. Sorry, I forgot to turn on the sound when I change when I turn this on. So, hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Hello Newman. Hello Walter. Hello Paul. Hello K M. I can't pronounce your name. Sorry about that. So, anyway, so now the sound is on and hopefully everything is going well. And this is the Caroline Live Show. If you are on the show, say hi in the chat field and I will say hi back to you. Hello, Rodney. Okay, yes, I know, I just turned on the sound. Sorry about that. All right, so I let's start with housekeeping as we always do. Let's see. All right, so we do this every Thursday at three o'clock my time, which is Eastern Standard Time. I am in Atlanta. This is a place of positivity. Mm -hmm. All right, and last but not least, please mute your Amazon Echo device. I will be saying the wake word a lot during this show, a lot, and I cannot edit it out. So anyway, let's get started here. Let's start with the agenda. I've got just a ton of things to cover, and I've got a bunch of demos for you today. So number one, there will be an interactive portion of the show today. All right, so I'm going to ask for your input in the very next slide. So you'll find out what that is next. Uh, as I always start, I always start off with updates from last week, things that I did. Uh, I've got an update from Tom's Hardware. I'll present to you my Raspberry Pi project. And today we're going to talk about Alexa conversations, and I'll do a little demo for you there. And then at the end of every show, I reveal next week's video. All right, so that is the show okay so hopefully y'all can hear me now next let's i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this out to you guys this is gonna be part of the very next segment that i do so hurry up on this one the question is what advice would you give to your younger self and uh so um, put it in the chat field advice to yourself your younger self and of course there are rules okay uh, first of all keep it clean all advice must be fun and appropriate for all ages and positive no bad stuff here because this is a place of positivity and i am going to look at this and then i'm going to code this into my very next segment here all right so let me know all right so uh, Newman says, okay. Rodney says, I have to say I'm not a big fan of Plex yet. Very pl problematic with my Raspberry Pi. Did ask for help, but none was given. Fair enough. They must be busy. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. So here's the deal with, with Plex. Technically, uh, Plex is no longer supported on Raspberry Pi. They'd rather you do this on a Windows machine or a NAS device, one of the approved NAS devices or, you know, a, a, re a regular computer. It's, it's tough to do on a Raspberry Pi just because there's just not as much computing power. Uh, so that's the official, that's the official thing until, you know, we get the more official thing, right? Okay, so y'all, here's your shot. Give me some positive advice to your younger self that is fun, appropriate, uh, clean, that I can use in the next segment for a live coding session. How about that? All right, so moving on. So while y'all are thinking about that and typing that in, I'm gonna give you my updates from last week. All right, so this week, Tuesday, today's Thursday, uh, two days ago, I posted my Echo Frames review. And last week I forgot to show them to you, but here they are, these are the Echo Frames. Check this out. So they have the Echo, the Amazon Echo is right here on the sides and there's a little volume up, volume down button right here. Anyway, so if you've missed your um, missed this video, I will link to it in the chat field here. Let's see. Um, where is Echo Frames Review. I posted the video on my channel and I also have a written review on my um, on my website so here it is on my website carolinedunn.org website and I will copy and paste this into the chat field if you want to see my written review so in the regular um, in the YouTube tutorial it is a unboxing and setup 
of this, it was super hard to film, just for the record, but guys, it was super hard to film because all the sound comes out of two tiny speakers right here on the side. And then I was like, how am I gonna get audio? How am I gonna film this video? So then I ended up just turning the volume all the way up on these two speakers and just holding it up to the microphone. That was crazy. So anyway, not the most ideal thing to make a video about. All right, so anyway, so this is, um, these are the Echo Frames, AKA Alexa glasses, AKA uh, is this an school glass? That's, a, that's the main question that I set out to answer uh, with my written blog post and my video here. And uh, so please do check it out. Rodney says, thanks Caroline, so it my media then. All right, yes. Yes, Tr check that out. All right, so this is uh, Echo Frames. Now, switching back over to my PowerPoint, the next update I have for you is, oh yeah, Atlanta beats COVID. So every week I give this update about my 3D printing adventures. I had to take a step back from 3D printing, not because I had any 3D printing problems, okay? I know I had a whole bunch of problems. I had to take a step back from 3D printing because I'm volunteering with Atlanta Beats COVID and we're giving out free PPE to medical workers in need. And I arranged to have uh, free PPE that we gave to this uh, free mobile COVID-19 testing site. And here's some pictures from that event and that was actually really cool that we did that. I actually didn't go. I actually, my neighbor um, was the one volunteering, working at uh, this free mobile testing site and then I gave it to him and then he took it over there. So anyway, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and so I'm kind of working on stuff more uh, from an administrative uh, level now, scheduling things and doing stuff behind the scenes versus actually printing PPE. Uh, let's see, it, it took me about a week to print about 32 face uh, shields, face, uh, face shield frames. And now we have a person who can cast, not 3D print, 500 to 1,000 a week. So that's a lot better than I can do. <laughs> so anyway, alrighty, let's see, we've got, okay, we do have other, okay, we have, we're getting some advice here. Thank you. All right, don't give up. Uh, realize that being happy is your own decision. Take better steps to prevent knee and ankle injuries. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Great advice. Thank you. Now, uh, the other announcement I have to make is, I don't know if y'all, if y'all, you know, followed me for a while now, I made this hand washing timer. Actually, I made two different videos about hand washing timers on my channel. That got picked up by Tom's Hardware. They approached me. They wanted to put the hand washing tutorial on their website and that launched today, this morning. Check it out. So check out Tom's Hardware. Check out Caroline on Tom's Hardware. Here is the link in the chat field. And uh, now uh, they did ask me to make a few changes before we put it on their website. But uh, so the changes they asked me to make were and here, let me let me show this to you now. Okay, the, okay, and I just triggered it. I always do this. All right, let's go back to, let's just go over here. All right, so I can show this to you. So it looks a lot different than the last time I showed this on my channel. So the changes they asked me to make were, uh, one, they asked me for a case. I 3D printed this case. Yes, you can 3D print this case, or you can order it 3D printed. I found somebody else's design on Thingiverse, and I added, it didn't have a lid though, so I added a lid. And then um, the other thing they asked me to add was this LCD screen out front. So it's a countdown timer. So uh, the other thing I changed was this ultrasonic sensor. Before I had a motion sensor, now I have an ultrasonic sensor. I can program exactly how far away my hand is before it triggers. So now I've triggered it. There it goes. Yeah, and it counts down. If you can hopefully see this, you can see it count down 18, 17, 16. How much? So now you know how much time you have left of your 20 seconds to wash your hands and stay safe for COVID. And uh, that's my little demo. So if you, so it is free. This tutorial is free, like all the other tutorials. Uh, but it is over on the Tom's Hardware. There is, you know, the full text written tutorial that I did, and then I also made like a little complimentary, not fully in detail, but yeah, to just kind of walk you through, hey, here's the different steps and here's what it looks like. So here you go, Tom's Hardware, check it out. All right, so so please do check it out. That's very exciting that I um, am on Tom's Hardware. 
now. All right, so that was that's an update from last week. Hand washing timer. Who knew? Oh, I'm also continuing to work. Last week, if you were on the show last week, I showed you this Mycroft AI. It was a voice activated uh, speaker, um, artificial intelligent speaker, not Alexa, not Google Home. And uh, so we, we got that working last week. I did a little demo for you. It was kind of funny. And the whole shtick was that you can do a custom wake word. So I'm working on that right now. I have not finished the custom wake word. I am planning to make a video about this or several videos about this, depending how, on how it goes. Uh, if anybody tried this, the, I gave out all the links, all the code last week. If anybody tried it, let me know in the comments and then we will, we will do this. Yeah. So anyway, so let me know how this, how you guys like the Mycroft AI. All right. Okay, so still working on that. Now we are going to go into a Raspberry Pi demo, and it's going to be a demo of the Pi Top. And let me go over to show you what the Pi Top looks like. And this is the Pi Top right here. All right, check that out. Okay, so let's see if any of the screens. Okay, the screen is not on right now. All right, so I am going to go into my VNC. And let's see if we can, all right, so you can see my, my, my VNC. You can see the code I have up here. They do a lot of stuff. I'm gonna just show you a couple of the projects that I've worked on on the Pi Top. And let's, hopefully, hopefully it works here. <laughs> let's see. All right, so let's run the screen text one. And hopefully you can see this. It says, welcome to Caroline's channel. No. Yes. Uh, so you can personalize the text on the screen. Okay. So it. Oh. Okay. It's on for four seconds and then and then it clears off. So that's why there's nothing on there. All right. So that is that's one little uh, project that you can do. Uh, the other project I want to show you is the potentiometer project, and this uses all the LEDs. And this is the potentiometer. So I'm going to run that. And this is. This is the code that they that's given to you when when you you know when you um, sign up for this, or when you buy the product, and so now you see the the value of the potentiometer. Hopefully, y'all can see this. This is really small. Okay, okay, zoom in. I'm gonna try to zoom in here. All right, here we go. Is 172. So now I'm gonna change the value. I'm gonna turn the potentiometer, and now it is at the 400s and at the yellow LED is lit. And then I'm going to continue to turn the potentiometer. Now it's at 700, 800 and the green is lit. So in a faster way, is as you turn the potentiometer, the lights change. Depending on low is red, medium is yellow and high is green. And you can change this um, to anything you want it to be, you can make uh, red high and green low. You can do all sorts of different things, but all you have to do is just adjust this little this little knob here of your potentiometer, and you can learn all about this. And if I was doing this without the Pi Top kit, which I could do, I'd get out a breadboard, a bunch of resistors, a bunch of jumper wires, and wire this up. This was more plug and play because you just plug in everything with these little cables here on the side, and then they give you they've got all these libraries, Python libraries. They give you all the code. And if you just want to look at the code with me really quick, it is you print the potentiometer position, you know where it's plugged into, it's plugged into A0, and then you can, um, if the potentiometer is less than 333, it's red. If it's uh, between 334 and 600, then it's yellow. And then if it's above 667, it is green. And that is uh, one of the projects that came with it. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get into why I asked you to give me some advice for your younger self. We're going to do random text and we are going to do zoom out and make this a little bit smaller. And what we're going to do is we're going to have your advice flash across this little screen here. And we're going to kind of do a live code uh, thing with you guys today. How's that sound? All right. So First of all, it's going to be random. So we're going to do import random. And then over here, we're going to have our, our text. So text, text list. 
and we're going to have an array equals and so the first piece of advice I got was I would have told my younger self don't give up all right so let's do don't give up copy paste okay and then and then let's do the next one which is realize that being happy is your own decision copy and not all this is gonna fit now that I look at this but that's okay and then let's see uh, take better take better steps to root knee and ankle injuries okay I'm gonna shorten this because it's not all gonna fit in this tiny little thing here okay And then uh, start learning a programming language. Copy. Paste. All right, so you're probably getting to the where you can't actually see my stuff, but that's okay. All right, and then we're going to have the output text be a random choice of our text list and then and then we are going to print it the output text and then we are going to sleep for three seconds and then we're gonna clear it and then we're gonna try something else so let's see if this works and okay I it is working check this out so maybe I will um, switch on to my desktop there's a desktop version and you can see Realize that being happy is your own. Take better steps to prevent knee. Start learning a programming. <laughs> Take better steps. Start learning a programming. Take better steps. Realize that being happy is your own. Yay, okay, so anyway, that was the uh, live code as much as I could uh, during this show just to show you um, some of the capabilities and some of the projects I worked on this week with PyTop. So tell me what you think. And uh, yeah, so let's let's move back into, I'm gonna close that out. And now let's move back into my PowerPoint presentation. All right, what do you guys think of that? So that's the, that's the PyTop. I hope you enjoyed that. If you are, you know, if you, if you want to, if you have a beginner, this is, uh, is, this is great for beginners, this is great for adults and kids who want to learn about Raspberry Pi and LCD, L, LED uh, lights and buttons and buzzers and potentiometers. All right, so that's it. All right, so a question here. Rodney says, could the Mycroft work with a webcam so you don't have to use a handheld microphone, like a full, uh, 1080p webcam with built-in microphone. Uh, probably, actually, I think I think that would work. You should uh, check that out and let me know. Uh, they do sell on Amazon. They do sell microphones that are like this big that are USB, and so most people don't use the the handheld microphone like I do. I'm just using a microphone from a really old game, and that's just what I had on hand. So yeah, I think I think that would work actually. So check that out and let me. Let me know if it does work. So a USB microphone is supported. And there are certain USB microphones that they've tested that they really like. So anyway, check that out. All right, so next, let's talk about Alexa. Okay, so every week I talk about, hey, Alexa is, um, they had this developers conference. It was totally online, totally free on July 22nd. Every week I talk about something about Alexa live. So this week I have a, I, I'm going to talk about Alexa conversations, all right? And that was one of the big, big announcements that came out of the Alexa Live conference. It's a public beta, so there's a lot of kinks, a lot of, a lot of problems in the system right now. It's not perfect, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to humanize Alexa for you. That is the goal here. Uh, so you. As a developer making skills, you're working more in the front end GUI and you're using machine learning and AI to, so that you don't code every single possibility that could happen. And uh, it kind of is trying to figure out stuff for you. 
and then you're spending less time on the back end. All right. Uh, so uh, there is a challenge and you could win money, real money. Uh, if you join the Alexa Conversations Challenge. And I'm going to give you information about that today as well as do a demo of Alexa Conversations on my device. All right, so just if you look at this little graph here on the, on the bottom, it says old way. And the old way of coding an Alexa skill was you, you ask one question, they ask one question, you ask one question, they ask. It's very linear. And if you deviated from the asking and answering of that one question, the whole thing fell apart, basically. And, and you know, we did try lots of creative ways in there, and we did, you know, we were able to kind of catch ourselves and make it more human, but essentially it was just a ton of back-end coding is what we did. All right, so with Alexa Conversations, what they're doing now is now you just give, you do on the front end, you just give it all the possibilities you say, okay, well, these are the three inputs I need in order to give, give my user the output that they're looking for. And they can do it in whatever order they want. And if they change their mind on one of the three inputs they've already inputted, they can always change it too. So I think that's pretty cool. And, but it is a whole new way of doing things. And I do want to show you this. Um, okay, I is not, okay. Hold on. Now, now I do want to show you my Chrome browser. So just to give you a couple of things I want to show you. All right, so this is the main Alexa Live page where you can get everything that they showed you on that day. So all the developer stuff is right here. Now, what's key about this website that I want to show you is that if you look at it, it says, okay, it gives you like review all the text, review the releases. They made like 20 releases, 20 announcements on one day. It was a lot. And then let's talk about, uh, and then it says join our office hours. Okay, that's, that's cool too. But here's where you really need to pay attention. And I, I miss this because it's all the way down at the bottom of the page is on demand sessions. So this is hours and hours and hours of streaming video, recorded video of their conference, all organized, properly titled, everything. So you can get to what you want to get to. But in order to get to it, you have to give them your contact information. But it's worth it, okay? So I've done this, I have logged in, and I there is an entire segment just about Alexa Conversations, and they explain why they did it, how they did it, just all, all sorts of good stuff about Alexa Conversations in this video. So this is the official Amazon. This is why we did Alexa Conversations. Here are all the other 20 announcements as well, and it's really nicely organized and everything. So anyway, check it out but you do have to give out your email address, not to me, to Amazon in order to see this content. All right, so let's jump into, um, you don't have to fill out this form if you just wanna look at the, at the Alexa Conversations, um, tutorials, code samples, the documentation, that's all, that's all right here, all right? So here it is, you know, just the PowerPoint I just showed you, and you know, this is a little tutorial, so you can get all of this um, just I'm just going to give you the link. So this is not gardened off, you know, um, walled off. So here it is. So this is the tutorial that I've been working on. It's a pet, pet match tutorial. But before we get to the demo of this pet match tutorial, uh, I wanted to talk about the skills challenge. The skills challenge is a hackathon you can join. It's virtual. You don't have to be there in person. And it, you have 39 days more to submit. Your entry is not due until September 14th. So you've got a while. They announced this hackathon on July 22nd on the day of Alexa Voice. Um, it's free to enter, okay? And you could win $20,000 grand prize. And a finalist gets $5,000. There's a participation prize. 300 people will get $50 Amazon gift cards. Uh, you, you could have the best food and drink skill. There, you know, if you're in a category, you could win an, a, a, an additional $2,000 or $2,000 for being the best in your category. And it's open to, uh, you have to be 18, older in, 18 or older and you know, competition welcomes contestants from around the globe. And there are just a few countries like Brazil, Quebec, Cuba, Sudan, uh, that are excluded. But 
most countries, India is one of the countries that that was one of the big questions. Yes, India does, you can compete from India if you want to. And of course there are all these rules and regulations, but essentially you just join the hackathon totally free. You can work in teams. So if you have somebody you want to work with, that's great. You can do the whole thing virtually if you want to. Uh, 1,075 people have already signed up for this hackathon. It doesn't mean that all every single person is actually going to submit something here. So don't worry about that. Uh, but all the information you need is here. And if you click on resources, that's where you get all this documentation. And there's a Slack channel and they are doing uh, Twitch streams. And you know, there's, there's all sorts of resources to learn how to do this. I'm going to give you a very, very short intro today on how to do this. All right, so I'm going to go to developer.amazon.com and hopefully I'm still logged in here. Okay, developer.amazon.com and then I'm going to go to, I'm going to click on developer console and then I'm going to click on mouse over to Alexa, then I'm going to click on Alexa skills kit. And then I'm going to click create skill. And I'm going to show you how to make an Alexa Conversations skill that works out of the box. All right. So you need a skill name. So I'm going to say Caroline YouTube. Okay. Just that's a terrible skill name, but that's what we're going with right now. You want to select custom. And then I would recommend for now, because of this is good, I'm just showing you how to get to the tutorial slash sample code Alexa hosted node.js okay so that's the default and all you have to do is hit create skill okay so that's going to take a second it's going to take you to another page and they have these great templates now this is new fairly new new ish and but the templates that they're offering that are for alexa conversations are new so you have three examples for alexa conversations uh, intro to Alexa conversations, weather bot skill, and pizza ordering example. So I'd recommend that you start with intro to Alexa conversation. Um, this one is pretty boring. I've done it. It is um, tell me your favorite color and then remembers your favorite color. The weather bot skill, you name a city and then it gives you some fake information about the high and the low temperature for that city. And then the pizza ordering example, it is basically really trying to exploit the why you want to do Alexa conversations is basically you ordering a pizza, not in real life, just, you know, um, within the thing. And, and basically you can specify multiple toppings. You can specify the size. You can specify what kind of cheese you want on it. Uh, do you want thin crust or thick crust? And you can change your mind as you're ordering it. So, I mean, that's kind of how we used to order pizza back in the day. We used to call up the pizza place and say, oh, I want a you know, large pepperoni and then go, oh, no, sorry. Okay, add sausage to that, you know, or something. So it really, really ex shows you how Alexa conversation works. So I'm going to hit intro to Alexa conversations and then I'm going to hit continue with template. And it's going to literally just build me an Alexa skill, a working Alexa skill. Um, that I can look at the code, I can look at the front end, I can look at the back end and kind of dissect and reverse engineer into the skill that maybe I want to build. Okay, so anyway, let's, um, it's, this is going to take a few minutes. This is not, this is not a fast process, at least in, in my uh, experience here. All right, so what we're going to do is I want to do a demo of the um, tutorial that I uh, gave you and this is building a tutorial from scratch from a hello world not even using the template that they gave you um, I thought this was pretty cool and this goes into um, something called something they call pet match and pet match is basically uh, this it's a fake skill it's a skill where you tell it um, and let me switch back over to the PowerPoint to show this to you all right so pet match is um, you tell the skill, I want a large, medium, or small dog. I want a guard dog or a family dog. I want energy, low, medium, high. Okay, and basically it tells you what your perfect dog would be based on, on that. And so using the tutorial uh, that I have uh, put together, you can, I built this from scratch, you know, going through all the tutorial stuff. It took me a while. It probably took me about 
30 minutes to an hour to uh, just build it step by step one by one and for it to work but I do want to do a demo with you today and if you do have a preference on whether I ask for a large dog or a small dog, you know, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to kind of work it in because the magic of the skill is that you can change what you want and you don't have to ask for all three at the same time. You can ask for two out of three. Um, so let me, let me do a little demo with you on the pet match skill. All right, Alexa, launch Caroline Pet. Welcome to Pet Match. I can find the best dog for you. What size of dog are you looking for? I want a large guard dog. Would you prefer a high energy dog or a low energy dog? Low energy. For a large dog with low energy and guard temperament, I recommend a Borzoi. Change that to a small dog. I can filter for a family dog or a guard dog. Which do you prefer? Family. For a small dog with low energy and family temperament, I recommend a Papillon. I want a small dog, family, high energy. For a small dog with high energy and family temperament, I recommend a Basenji. Yeah, stop. So you see... I so you see in this demo, hopefully, that I could keep on changing my mind and I could I didn't have to specify all three things at once and it kind of just rolled with the changes and asked me things and then always just gave me a new result of a new dog. So anyway, that's kind of my little demo on how Alexa Conversations works. Oh, I need to. <laughs> I need to. Sorry, I don't know what so. the conversation is the author of. So, uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, I forgot to mute my device. All right, so um, that is well, the demo of Alexa Conversations. And I do want to mention while I'm here, oh, I, I see a question from Rodney. Have you ever tried to build a web server on a Raspberry Pi? That would be a nice talk. What kind of web server? Are you talking about like like instead of a CDN or something, um, are you? Is it for a website? What what web server? What's the use case? Tell me. All right. So let's go back to my skill demo. By the way, I used to have a dog a really, really, really long time ago. I had a dog. He was great. He made it till eleven. Uh, anyway, he he was he was high energy, a small high energy dog. He was definitely a family dog. Just by the way, so if you're wondering what what picture this is, this is a picture of my dog from a really long time ago. Uh, he passed away a really long time ago, or had him a really long time ago. Anyway, um, next. Oh yeah, so I do want to point out if you are interested in joining the contest that. Amazon has these contests for Alexa developers every every year or so. Last year, last March, I entered. It was the multimodal skills contest, and I was a top 10 finalist. And I was the only female in the top 10. I was the only one from Atlanta in the top 10. And I got written up about it in my local uh, publication. And this is my picture. So I won $5,000 in their first big contest that they had uh, for Alexa developers. I thought I, so I have shared that on this channel before, but it's been a while, so not a secret or anything. Let's see, Rodney says, website using PHP, HTML, JavaScript. Sorry to hear about your dog. Okay, why do I wanna make a website using PHP, HTML, and JavaScript? I really, I, 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 unless, I, I like buying I, I'm on GoDaddy or whatever service there is. I, I'm big on just uh, buying a web server and renting it off somebody else's machine. Having a single point of failure for my website, I have a website, carolinedunn.org. Having that single point of failure here at my house, the power goes out, the, my internet went out for three hours one night, so then my whole website would go down. So it's less likely my GoDaddy website web server is going to go down. So that's not something I've really explored. If there's a specific use case where, you know, like the internet didn't go out my house all the time, maybe I would consider it. But sorry, I've never known. I know my power goes out too often and my internet goes out way too often to, to have that kind of level of single point of failure in my house for a web server. 
if you're giving me the heebie-jeebies here, sorry. Okay. So anyway, uh, anyway, so if you want to join the contest, I will give you the link to join the contest now. And the resources. Let me just give you a link to the resources because that's the page I have me on right now. And you can learn all about Alexa Conversations here. All right, so now we are at the end of our show. At the end of the show, I always tell you what next week's video is going to be. Next week's video is going to be the setup of my Pi Top 4. The difference with the Pi Top 4 that I really like, that, that really differentiated it from all the other products I see on the marketplace, is that you don't have to have an HDMI monitor to use their product. It, they, out of the box, you can hook it up to your laptop computer and use your laptop computer as the screen. So a big challenge I see, especially with STEM kids or doing these STEM programs, is that not everybody has you know, just a freestanding HDMI monitor that they can hook up to their Raspberry Pi. Or you don't want to give up your monitor for your Raspberry Pi. So um, this overcomes that problem. It speeds up being able to get to seeing something on the Raspberry Pi. So a lot of people find it really tedious to get out a breadboard and put down your LED and then your resistor and then all your jumper cables and then you know, you're kind of fiddling around with that. And uh, so this, is, this, this overcomes all of that all in one shot. And then the programming is super easy because they've, they've, they, you're not looking at every GPIO pin and trying to correlate that. It's just, it, it's just you've got an input, digital input, D0, D1, and then you just map it to your LED, and then boom, it is, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than, if you're starting from scratch, it's a lot easier than if you are you know, an experienced person and you want to do something. So anyway, I'm going to do a Pi Top 4 setup video for next week, and I hope you'll, you'll watch. And that is the end of this show. All right, uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you'll check me out on Tuesday when I post my Pi Top video. I'll be right back here on Thursday, 3 o'clock, my time, Atlanta, Georgia. This is Caroline. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.